Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to continue talking about PhD interviews. So one of the key things for any PhD interview, whether that's Oxford or any other university, is to make a five to ten minute presentation. So at Oxford, we were actually given six minutes. So it's a lot to pack into a very short amount of time and it is the first impression interviewers get of you. It sways the decision quite a lot. So it's very important that you give a good presentation. So as always, I'm not gonna just tell you, I will show you my own interview presentation. And I know this one was a presentation they liked because they mentioned it again during my interview. They said, oh, that was a really great presentation you gave earlier and we were really impressed etc so I'll show you my slides uh, let's get to the computer shall we hi guys so one thing I always forget to do is to remind you to subscribe if you haven't already that way you're not gonna miss any of my new videos and also leave a comment if you like this video because it really helps the video out all right let's get back to my presentation shall we okay so you can see my screen now I've got it open so this is what my presentation looked like. I had seven slides in total for six minutes. The first slide was a title slide. So it was one slide per minute. That meant that I wasn't like rushing and flicking through the slides. So try and really minimize the number of slides and stick to about a, a slide per minute. Then I also had these extra slides at the end. I preempted some of the questions that they were gonna ask me. And then I could easily say, oh, actually, here's a picture and data, which I couldn't show during my presentation because of the lack of time. But um, here it is. Basically, what I did was obviously have the title of the presentation. In the first two slides, I gave um, sort of a background to why my project was important, where it fit within the rest of the field. So we were talking about ovarian cancer, so I really wanted to show some key statistics of why you know ovarian cancer is so bad and how important it is to actually work on. And I also made sure that I put references like this on the site. It just makes it more professional. Then I went more deeply into the background of my project. And so I mentioned, you know, the protein that we were working on. I gave a little bit of background uh, to what it does. Have a nice figure, which kind of encapsulates everything that's on the slide. And then on the slide, um, have as little as possible. And the rest of it, I would actually add on by speaking. So just have key bullet points. Don't have everything that you're going to say on top of the slide. It makes it look really messy and really distracting. And it is not a nice way to do it. You will lose marks for that. So now that I had given them the background of the project, I then went into my aims and I clearly articulated what it was that my project was aiming to achieve. So again, as you notice, I have one picture on the side, which kind of tells them exactly what I'm going to do. Again, two bullet points. It was so simple. So my supervisor always tells me this um, acronym, which is QUARK, which stands for question, assay, result, and conclusion. So that's the order that you should have your slides in. So you tell them what your question was, what you were aiming to do, then you tell them the essay you used or the method that you use, and then you tell them about your results, and then you tell them about your conclusion. It's very, very focused. I didn't mention my essay here. I didn't have a separate slide for it. I just mentioned how I did it, and it was just one or two lines. The essay is not super, super important. The results and the conclusion and the discussion and the limitations, they're definitely more important to mention. The title of the slide should be your result in a nutshell. It shouldn't be something vague like CMET expression in chemo-resistant cells. Give them an actual result. So I clearly said CMET expression is lower, but activation is higher in chemo-resistant cells compared to chemo-sensitive cells. And then again, there was no other detail and everything else I explained, right? That's what your presentation is for. You don't have to write all that text onto your slides, okay? Also, if you notice, uh, the pictures are quite big. There are literally, you know, just two panels on a slide. I've tried not to make it that full. On the next slide, I then had another result slide, basically. And I also had the statistics on here. Again, two, a maximum of two main 
pictures that show your main results also try not to have you know those big pictures where you have so many different figures in panels don't don't do that it's way too much if they can't see your slide it's gonna look really bad another great thing to do is to kind of like zoom down you should be able to clearly see everything at sort of you know 40 50 percent if you can't read it then you know that your text is too small and your slide is too full so again i put the main result over here um, in hindsight i could have cut this bit out uh, it's not super super essential and i could have just said it um, but that's okay as i was going along i was also explaining to them what these results meant so i would say okay so over here we saw using a western blot that cmet was decreased but the control was not decreased so we could say okay chemo resistant cells have less cmet so you see how i added you see how i am <laughs> i'm sorry awful pun um so it was that you could see that cmet was lower and you see how i added the the conclusion right at the end of my result sentence um yeah sorry my puns are just out of out of control today so you explain it a little bit more because you have to show them that you are able to conclude things from the picture and this conclusion was from this picture okay i showed them my whole thought process you know that this is what i saw that this was what i concluded that this was I what i further concluded so they'll know that you're able to think so because i've already given my conclusions with the results now this bit is kind of a discussion so what is good to mention over here is either the limitations of your project because one of the most crucial things about being a scientist is to actually be critical of your work and to be able to see what the actual loopholes in your logic are first i spoke about the possible explanations of why we're seeing the results that we're seeing there were some unexpected results uh, you can also explain that a little bit so these slides right they were more for me than the people because even though they look nice these little one two three these are actually bullet points to jog my memory right so put things on the slide and that's going to trigger you to say something so as soon as i saw unstable knockdown i was like okay that's something i need to now talk about when i saw ooh, overcompensation by other survival pathways i was like okay this is something I, I need to talk about so help yourself by using the slides as your own notes right but put as little as possible there's there's a fine balance and then at the end, I added a bit about the possible limitations of my experiment. So that is how to um, give a good presentation. In my extra slides, I had some of my other Western blots. I had more results. Also had um, the experimental setup over here. So if they wanted to know exactly what I did, I could, I could tell them. You know there was more of the experimental setup and again just look at how beautiful my slides were right i worked so hard to make these like really beautiful obviously don't waste time polish your slides as much as possible but polish what you're gonna say as much as possible as well so the final uh points that i want to mention are when it comes to answering questions give them more detail that you couldn't mention in your presentation that's why i have these extra slides so that i can use them to demonstrate more things and talk more about my results don't panic if some of the questions are challenging uh, i remember one of the professors asked me so this was the interview presentation they made us do in the seminar room in front of 15 oxford professors and any of them could add ask a question they wanted and so one of them said oh why are you doing this blah 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 so you really have to know and you really have to think um deeply about why you're doing the project you're doing and to really understand it so then i could say something like um i don't remember what i said actually but it was a smart answer um first of all is to obviously be aware of other similar research in your field and whether they go against yours make sure you've got reasons as to why 
you're doing it the way you're doing it and possible reasons for why your conclusions and your results are different from their results if someone has shown that something hasn't worked and you've shown that it has worked why is that give possible conclusions right and obviously you can't always get the exact reason but have a couple of reasons in your mind so in a nutshell what they're looking for is that you did your project you developed um hypotheses you could do the experiment and you could analyze the data and you can develop sound conclusions from your data and also um, when you're explaining your results don't say this does that say this suggests that it does that because that way you can escape a lot of um, criticism because you are not saying something is conclusive you're saying okay this kind of suggests to us this 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 right so it's kind of like a like a protective shield um, so that's all I've got to say today um, if you have any more questions please let me know and if I think of anything else I will I will definitely add more but I think for now I hope this was useful and keep it short keep it simple all right see you in another video bye don't forget to subscribe